for other records. All right, uh, Ms. Primus, can you hear me? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Verde, can you hear me? Yes, Your Honor. And I see we have uh, Mr. Hansen. Is Miss Hansen by uh, phone? Um, I think she's by uh, uh, via blue jeans, Your Honor. I, I don't. She's got her video muted, so if she can hear me, can you hear me, Miss Hansen? Uh, shoot! Oh, there she is. Hello. Hello. All right. Ms. Hansel, we were just checking to make sure you could uh, hear us. This is uh, case D598770, uh, the Hansen matter. Um, I'm not even going to go through the list of what's actually. There was a motion for an order to show cause. There was a motion, uh, Dad's motion for reconsideration. There was an opposition to that. There was a mom's opposition to the reconsideration. There was a mom's motion to set aside the um, uh, motion because of the reconsideration. There was Dad's opposition to set it aside, etc., etc., etc. First of all, regarding the uh, allegation um, of who took the uh, quote the safe and the guns. If they've if a report has been filed with Metro, court is simply going to leave that issue with Metro. I'm not getting into uh, whether a crime was committed. They can uh, feel free to do that, and or the parties can feel free to uh, take that police report, um, submit it for an insurance claim. Um, I believe if they have homeowners insurance, that would probably be covered under that, and. Uh, if, in fact, there is any sort of fraud being committed there, then I'm t guessing the insurance company would uh, follow up with that. First of all, as what as I see this, and I, I know that uh, Mr. Hansen and Ms. Primus were not happy with my original uh, decision back on uh, June 9th that was made known at that hearing, but the court did enter orders based on his... Um, gross monthly income of uh, 16930 that was based on his um, that was based on his paycheck stub to that date um, what I'm not going to do Miss Primus is go through and nitpick every check or you pick some period of time and even it out and show that that's a lesser amount um, in some um, when I look to his 2000 and, um, 2019 year end, uh, that would still come up to over 14,000. It's 14,286. And in that year, he only had 112 hours of overtime. Um, this year, in this year, he already has 97. So I, it doesn't, it's really not going to take into this court's calculation whether he has another 15 hours of overtime or not. He still has the same annual, he still has the uh, same annual salary. Um, I could have, if you wanted to, if you wanted to start playing games, if I use your exhibit uh, 13, and use two months. That seems like to the court the easiest calculation. Use uh, use the first two months since it's cut off right there. Um, divide that out, and that's actually nineteen thousand a month. I was absolutely clear that if in fact he could not make these payments, he was free to access his deferred comp as long as he continued to maintain an accounting of what he's using it for. Um, if in fact he could not make the bills and if in fact let me give you another for instance if in fact he can get the mortgage waived because of the, the current pandemic which I doubt they will do it given his current income but he's welcome to take that off his side of the ledger but I am NOT resetting aside my temporary orders So my question right now is, regarding the contempt, and there was already a contempt allegation at the first hearing, and I indicated I will still continue the issue of contempt for the time of trial. Uh, we can now, I guess, add in the new allegation of contempt. 
but as we stand here right now in court, has he continued to pay the $2,500 a month as well as the approximately $9,000 as listed on his FDF? Your Honor, no. you, you, Your Honor, you issued an order granting our motion for reconsideration specifically ordering and i'm looking right now for the date of that order but <clears throat> specifically ordering that the support payment would would be all of the bills which he has continued to pay and then that his support to her would go down from twenty five hundred dollars a month to one thousand dollars a month so uh, your honor and that was uh filed august 13th so prior to that he had paid as ordered on june 9th since then he has uh, reduced that payment directly to her to $1,000 a month. In addition, Your Honor, as it relates to her claim for contempt, Ms. Hansen took the support order to the DA and opened a case to have my client garnished, which is her right and that's fine, but she reported to the DA that there were no arrears. So I'm not understanding that, No, no, no. Let me back up a minute. That, and I can, t because I do my own motions for reconsideration, this is something that was granted behind the, the scenes by my law clerk because there was no opposition at the time. So. But, uh, Your Honor, respectfully, my client, I mean, we don't know that. So my client has followed this court's order. So my, my answer simply is since that August 13th order was issued, he has not paid the $2,500 a month. He has paid the $1,000 a month because that was the court's order. Okay, that's fine. Then as of today, I'm setting that aside and going back to the $2,500 as an, in addition to the uh, prior $9,000. Thank you, Your Honor. Respectfully, Your Honor, can I just make a record uh, on that? I, I already made the one regarding the figures, Ms. Primus, but go right ahead. Again, your this is not a case where he's going to be shy of money. He can tap into his deferred comp and make payments. Okay, Your Honor, we, we will. And I and I, the record I simply want to make is that until two weeks ago, just so Your Honor understands, until two weeks ago, he had he was being told he could not access that due to the outstanding loan. He now has learned that the CARES Act does have a provision that allows him to access additional money. And so he will, he will do that then as this court's order is what it is. He will continue to trace every dollar as he has done and as we have submitted to this court. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, hey, I'll Your tell Honor, you the more, the more bothersome thing is the fact that I had previously ordered that. We called Dr. Polini and apparently no one has contacted him yet. C correct, right. Your Honor, because first of all, please understand that since we've been before you in June, Mom has gone through two attorneys. I was communicating with uh, Mr. Kelsey after the last hearing. Mr. Kelsey and I and Mr. Hansen's administrator for his 457B all were under, understood and Mr. Hansen was told that he could not take out additional money. As a result of that, some uh, we made some attempts at uh, settlement discussions related to custody. Those did not resolve but again, Mr. Hansen only has recently learned that the money could be withdrawn, and he's in the process of doing that and starting that process. But our hands were tied, Your Honor, because he was told by the plan administrator, and I communicated all of that to Mr. Kelsey, and he understood that, that he could not take money out. And now you found out he can? Yes, and he's in the process of doing that. He started that process, I believe, earlier this week. Listen, if it's... It They've been married since 07. Is that all uh, community property? Um, no, Your Honor, I yes. believe that I'd have to go. Your Honor, I will have to confirm with the statements. I do believe my client was employed by the fire department prior to the date of marriage. Well, he can certainly answer that real quick. Were you were you uh, with the fire department when you were, before you were married, sir? Yes, sir. 13 For years. 15 years? 13 years. 13 years before you got married? Yes, sir. Yeah. 12. All right. I, we've been married 13 years. All right. Um, I, I just don't want to get into a position, Ms. Primus, where you, he only liquidates out a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then they, they tell him later on that this like, pandemic situation, because right now, my understanding is there's no tax liabilities or anything. So the better Correct. the better Your situation Honor, is to probably estimate 
what the community property interest in it is, just general calculations between you and uh, Mr. Verde. Uh, possibly withdraw that entire amount and keep it in one of or other's trust account so that, uh, yes. again, they can benefit by this current situation. I will do that, and I will keep that in my trust account. My understanding is Mr. Verde has actually filed a motion to withdraw. So I will, we will estimate that amount. I will confirm that amount in writing to Mr. Verdi if he is still on the case. Um, and we will hold that uh, money in my trust account, Your Honor. Okay, let me- uh, uh, Not in your trust account because I have not been able to access any of our uh, financial institution, uh, institution accounts. He has locked me out of all of our community property. Ms. Hansen, Therefore, Ms. I Hansen, need access Ms. Hansen, to Ms. Hansen, Ms. Hansen, oh. did I yes. ask you a question? No, Your Honor. Sure seems like we're all playing video games right now, but we're actually in court, and I wouldn't allow you to speak in court, neither would my marshal. Do you understand that? Yes. Mr. Verde, I I don't know if I've, I've seen it. I'm looking at my, yeah, there is a, a motion to withdraw. Are you wanting to withdraw on the record here today? Um, well, Your Honor, uh, you know, that was before, you know, Ms. Ms. Uh, Hansen has communicated to me that she does plan on retaining, uh, replenishing the retainer. That was just as a safeguard. Um, in the event, um, let's just keep it on calendar as of right now, Your Honor. Um, but I do trust my client's words, so that, that would be a different topic, um, Your Honor. Okay, let's, let's do it this way, Mr. Uh, Verde. Uh, if, in fact, you do refile, I'm going to vacate it for right now because I don't, um, all you'd have to do is file a re-notice and put it on my chamber calendar. Okay, yes, Your Honor. But I'm going to vacate that uh, October 20th, 2020, indicating that for right now you're going to stay on the case. And then if you decide subsequently to get off, just re-notice that motion and put it on any of my chamber calendars. And we usually grant those within a day or two. Yes, Your Honor. All right. So now that everything's uh, been clarified, um, when do you think we would be back, Ms. Uh, Primus, on a, a Dr. Polini outsource evaluation? Uh, well, Your Honor, hopefully within 90 days. Um, I mean, that's what we had said it for before, with the belief that he would get it back that in that time. I would hope that my client has the money in the next week and can start the process within the next week. So I would think 90 days, Your Honor. That's agreeable, Your Honor. That's... All right, that will get us to... Um, if it's September, that would get us uh, exactly 90 days out would be December 10th at uh, 1.30. That works, Your Honor. That works, Your Honor. So, I mean, unless Ms. Primus wants to offer to do the order today, Mr. Verde, since uh, technically it's in your client's benefit uh, with me setting aside the prior order and reinstituting the 2500 a month, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, again, I, you, I realize that that was, and I'll, I'll, again, it was by, basically by default, which this court is uh, leaning lately towards granting because I'm bothered when people don't file oppositions to those, uh, but administratively it was reduced, so if that's in fact the allegation, I don't know that it's truly contempt, but I'm not, if, if, um, if, Ms. Hansen believes that's still a contemptible issue, then we'll deal with it uh, in the, at the time of trial as well as the other issue of contempt. Your Honor, no, Your Honor just, to, just to clarify the issue of um, the, the arrears for the last few months that weren't paid of the, uh, the spousal support and child support, is that being deferred to trial, you said, Your Honor, that issue? No, I'm, I'm, admitting, I'm admitting that from August and September for when the court granted uh, the, uh, the motion um, because the, uh, there was no opposition filed and that falls back on, again, your client for not filing opposition. It was granted by default. Um, so I, there's not going to be arrears uh, for at least the month of uh, when was it? for July and August. Your yes. Honor? Yes, Ms. Primus. I've got a motion for contempt on today. Um, Again, Ms. Not Ms. Primus, I am I. The contempt regarding the uh, property, alleged taking of the property. No, Your Honor, she is not allowing my client access to the house. He's gone twice 
with a police escort. Uh, the first time she let the police in the house, but did not let my client in. He just tried again last week. She still did not let him in the house. Well, if you want to prepare a more extensive order, well, they absolutely will uh, allow him in there. I'll sign it. I don't know why, Miss Hansen. I've never heard that they would. They he would has no personal belongings. Miss Hansen, he has none. every he right has to go in there with Metro to verify that he does not have. He has. Okay, then he's going to come out a third time, and he gets to come inside the residence with the police. Ms. Primus, if you want to, again, draft a more clear order where it's clear to Metro that he can go in with them, I have no problem with that. Okay, Your Honor. Your Honor, may I ask for what reason? Because he has no personal belongings Ms. in his Hansen, home at all with Ms. Hansen, Ms. Hansen, did I not tell you before about speaking out? If there's nothing there, then there's nothing there. Ms. Primus, what did you say? Yeah, Your Honor, there's a, there's a couple other issues. I'm just kind of not sure what to do right now because, first of all, Ms. Hansen, and we, we submitted this to the court, as my client is paying all of the bills and making monthly payments on the HELOC, Ms. Hansen is going into the bank and withdrawing money from the HELOC account that he is, that he is paying down, and we submitted those records. And the, and the other issue we have, Your Honor, is we cannot, we have filed a motion with the Discovery Commissioner. She has been ordered to produce documents. We okay. still don't have the documents. Again, that will, be, that will be handled by the Discovery Commissioner. If you want to get me a specific order blocking the HELOC to serve on the bank, go, go right ahead. Okay. And then the one last thing, Your Honor, last, I think when we were here in March, might have been June, but I think it was the initial hearing in March, Your Honor indicated that, that Your Honor wants us to attend mediation. Um, I, I reached an agreement with Mr. Kelsey regarding mediation and a mediator. Ms. Hansen then fired him. I have communicated with Mr. Verdi a few times on that. I've received no response. I, I think this case could potentially go to mediation and be resolved, but I cannot get an agreement, despite Your Honor's comments, that you want this case to go to mediation. Your, Your Honor, no opposition to mediation. However, we have sent over proposed terms to Ms. Primus, um, and we haven't received any sort of... Um, reply back to those terms. Um, and so uh, based off of that, we're, we're willing to stipulate to mediation. That's not a problem here. So if, the, if that's what Ms. Premius would like to do, then, then no opposition from well, here. Listen, then can we just stipulate on the record for a private mediation with attorney Ed Kanan? Is there any opposition to that? So that we know yes. it's agreed to? Uh, yes. Uh, I would have to defer my client. Uh, Irene, are you okay with mediation? Not with uh, Mr. Kanan. Not, not with Mr. Kane and Ms. Primus, and that's something we can work out um, after the hearing. We can decide well, on a, uh, an appropriate let's mediator. Let's not delay this any longer. Let's try to get a name. What about Jason Namey? I'm fine with that, Your Honor. I would like for both of us to agree upon a uh, mediator together. You can't agree whether One you even have property in your house right now, Ms. Hansen. So how do you think you're going to agree on a mediator? Your Honor, can I say something? Sure. Your Honor, there is no personal belonging of Donovan's here. I'm not re-arguing that right now, Ms. Hansen. I'm not re-arguing that. No, no, no. Listen, no, uh, I, can I? let's do it this way. Ms. Primus, uh, send over three names, not in, excluding uh, Mr. Kanan, uh, since we know that's not going to be a name. Send over three <clears throat> names to Mr. Verde. Uh, give him a week to decide, and if you don't get an answer from either him or Ms. Hansen, if she ends up representing herself, Submit the three names to the court, and the court will pick one of the three. Thank you, Your Honor. But Thank again, you. the uh, if if custody is still going to be an issue, I, I mean, you're welcome to mediate. Your Honor, we're that. going forward. Yeah, we're going to go forward with the custody evaluation. I think both parties agree that's necessary. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's correct. All right. Uh, the matter will be continued for a status check um, regarding, I guess, mediation and the outsource evaluation uh, December 10th at 1.30. Thank you, Your Honor. All Thank right. You, Again, Honor. Ms. Primus, you'll be preparing me an order uh, from today. I'd appreciate that. Um, and then we'll uh, see you in December. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a good Thank day. Thank you, Honor. Everybody stay safe and healthy.